Hello everyone and welcome to Arrowcraft. So in today's video I'm gonna show you how to do your arrow knocks. So we're gonna go from a bear shaft to something that looks like that. Alright, so um, what we are gonna need, uh, I'll show you what we're gonna need. I have my workbench of course. Now this is a, a jig that I did in order to guide the blades and I'm cutting the shaft to reinforce the knock. So um, these kind of knocks which are uh, medieval inspired um, would have had this reinforcement going with the grain of the wood. So back in the day this would be made out of wood. Um, today we are gonna replace that piece of wood with a PVC sheet. Now so this which is basically just a steel tube uh, in which I had cut with an angle grinder here and here to guide the blade um, is what is gonna allow us to cut along the shaft so we can then do that insert for uh, reinforcing the, the knock and then um, in a similar way then later we'll do the, the slit for the knock as such now going back to this, like I said, it's just a, a metal tube. As long as you get a close enough size for the shaft that you use, you should be okay. So what I did is to drill two holes here and then tap those so I can use the, the thread and then keep the shaft in place. The other tool, um, it's... Um, simple holder that I made for several of these blades so one of these would be too thin for the necessary cut so this PVC sheets that I use would be two 2.5 millimeters thick so basically by doing this sort of simple jig then I'll be able to just choose how many blades I I put so I can decide to put just three or two etc so the way this works is just uh, there's um and one of these knots goes into the holes that these blades have that allows it to keep it there in place then there's enough room room there for as many blades as you need this one just keeps it in place as well put that back So this one is holding the blade securely by going through that hole. So I don't need to tighten that too much. And this one basically what it's doing is pressing the blades together uh, in place. Now as I tighten this, of course that is going to push this side. So in order to stop that from happening, we just put one of these uh, bracelets, metallic bracelets, which do a, a brilliant job at keeping stuff together. So I'm only taking this apart now for you guys to, to see. So now I'm able to tighten that up very well. And there you go. I have a blade that cuts wood and I can choose the thickness. When I was cutting to the shaft, this blade is what I would have used in the first video, if you guys saw the first video. In today's video I'm going to show you a different uh, technique but I just wanted to show you this little uh, jig that you could make in order to decide how, you know, the thickness of the cut that you want to make. And then basically I'll just push it all the way until it is flush with the exit. It, it depends how you know how long you how deep you want to cut into the shaft anyway and then by slightly tightening these ones not too hard we are able to keep the shaft in place whilst we cut now the first thing we need to make sure before we start is um, we need to be able to read the grain of the shaft so um, as I was saying this reinforcement goes with the grain 
of the shaft or with the grain of the wood which means you need to be able to get the shaft of wood and see the lines how are they running uh, along the shaft so if we take a um, slightly uh, lighter lighter wood sometimes we are able to see the grain much easier so in this case in this case we see some lines running across the shaft and if we were to and if we were to look at it a cross section we'll see the line we'll see the grain of the wood just cutting like that really hope you guys can see here on the camera so we have the grain running we have the veins of the wood like this so that means we're gonna cut like this keeping that in mind we want to align this with the grain so it's gonna be something like that now the other the other thing that we want to make sure is to to have a read at the shaft itself um, therefore to determine what end we want it to be the tip of the arrow and what end we want it to be the knock so we have more of these veins here so I want this at the front and what we want then is we're gonna make this the, the knock end we can see the grain running along here so by turning it like that 90 degrees should be able to align it with the grain of the wood now this very end of the shaft I don't like how it is it's a little bit damaged so what I'm gonna do is align it here and I'm just gonna cut this part now having made that cut I can see more clearly the grain of the wood so the grain is actually going it's actually going like this this slit here where we're gonna that is gonna guide the blade is actually perfectly aligned with the grain of the the wood and on the shaft so with that done we can proceed to cut it there's a quicker way of doing this which is using a jigsaw now the, the thing that you have to make to make sure using a jigsaw is that um, the blade is perfectly aligned so the blade goes up and down right um, in the, when having the two slits in line because what you don't want is the, the reciprocating blade to hit any of those edges I have these on the way so I'm just gonna do it the other way around so once we know the blade is in right aligned with the slit of the guide we can then proceed to use the the jigsaw remember I'm using the surface to keep it in line as well I'll show you guys how it is looking so there you go a perfect straight cut having used the jig so in this case actually because it's slightly going to the um, slightly sliding to the left right but that cut we've made is still very thin so what I'm gonna do is pass the blade again and this and this time I'm gonna push it to the right hand side okay there we have it let's take it out perfect cut along 
the shaft to provide that reinforcement and again we can see the vein here so that means we have actually cut it along the grain we can see the grain continuing here and of course we can always finish it um, with a bit of a uh, sanding with a file I think it's gonna rain so we're gonna have to move indoors so the next material that we use is a PVC sheet so um, and we are gonna cut this in stripes once we have the stripes what we need to do is to make sure that we cut them to the same size as the um, slit uh, and the shaft of course we want to make sure that the slit that we cut on the shaft is the same thickness so it can actually uh, accommodate the PVC uh, sheet um, the, the insert now if there's a bit of a gap between the the slit cut in the shaft and the PVC it doesn't really matter as we're gonna be putting some um, resin a mark there where we're gonna cut it to size and it just fits perfectly in this case and we can then get ready to uh, apply the glue since the surface of PVC sheets can be quite smooth uh, one thing we could do is to sand it to sand it to make it rougher and this is always going to help uh, any glue that we use to adhere properly to the material we just have to make sure of course that once we have sanded the surface uh, it is free from impurities and just that clean in this case i'm using a, a two-part resin but any strong glue would do the job and once we have the mixture we just want to really get uh, some of those uh, lumps of glue in the slit and um, of course we also apply some of it on the insert uh, the reinforcer insert in here now some of these resin may um, squeeze out once we we start pushing the insert but that is all right um it, it won't be a problem once it's sealed because we'll be removing all the the excess of the the pvc sheet and then um, what I usually have at hand is a, a set of uh, clothing pegs um, but any sort of DIY clamping uh, would do also fine or you can always use a, a sort of weight on top of it and once we have um, completed that we just wait for the glue to cure once the glue is all cured we'll uh, proceed then to remove all of the excess of the uh, PVC sheet at this point it's also um, always good to take a second look at the shaft again um, we see these veins um, and spotting those veins what's gonna happen is that if uh, for whatever reason the shaft decides to break those veins are gonna break in this uh, in that like this so we want to make sure that those veins will be facing away from our, our hand and that it's important at the uh, when we are considering what side of the knock is going to be facing away so we are in this case we're going to use that this side and remove all of the pvc on 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 the other side keep a little bit of pvc uh, on this side to serve as a as as a guide uh, for our hand to know uh, the odd feather when we're doing speed shooting without having to look at the arrow the piece of equipment that is worth a uh, considering uh, by and if you do this kind of job is this um, carving uh, bits for the motor tool or for the dremel i found them particularly convenient uh, when we are carving all sorts of material especially wood but it helps for pvc so i'll choose this one for now so we start removing all of the pvc excess on this side of the shaft this 
helpful to keep checking whether our carving is uh, keeping in line with the shaft because we wouldn't want to damage the shaft. We can't um, do the final uh, removal of PVC with a sanding uh, paper. It's always going to be more gentle, uh, less margin for error. Now for this side, we're also going to remove the ex excess of the PVC sheet, but uh, only up to uh, this point. So the rest can serve as a, as a cue for the speed shooting. <laughs> And there we have it, the first part then is completed. And what we want now is to carve a sort of V uh, shape to facilitate when we are knocking the arrow. Something like this is just going to guide the string so uh, again we don't have to look at the arrow when we are knocking it. Really nice shape indeed. The next step consists of um, filing a little bit further that PVC uh, sheet, that the reach that it's going to work for uh, the speed shooting queuing, uh, just using a set of fine files. So what we want is just to be barely detectable. We don't want it, it to be uh, harsh. We don't want it to stick out too much, but just uh, noticeable to, to your fingers. Once more, with the aid of our um, cutting guide, we're gonna then um, start cutting the actual uh, knock slit and in this case the cut is going to be perpendicular to the grain of the wood so um, cutting across the, the reinforcement. Using three hacksaw blades together is going to provide the perfect uh, thickness for the, the knock that I used um, for, for the string, for the string that I used. Um, again I'm using the holder that I have made for this specific process. You can of course use any saw. Uh, in my case, I find that this one to be quite um, um, time saving and, and efficient for my purposes. Once the main knock um, slit is uh, carved, then we can just uh, do the final touches with a uh, fine file especially on the sides of the nook where um, there's going to be a lot of um, tension when we are at full draw the corners of the nook may uh, damage or hurt a little bit the string so we want to prevent that by um, carving in a little bit of a groove in, in on those uh, corners and at last we have a handmade a uh, knock uh, i think it turns out very well i really like the groove for the uh, speed shooting and the very last step is just to make sure that uh, the knock is wide enough to fit nicely on the string so we don't want it to tie um, but we don't want it loose that concludes this video uh, thank you very much again for watching don't forget to give it a like and i'll see you in the next uh, video and here's a bonus for those of you who stay to the very end and um, you can always apply a little bit of glue in the edge of the knock to make it snappy if that's your preference